But ultimately, what this case is about is about the First Amendment, about that December 18, 2018 op-ed piece, and whether Ms. Hurd's freedom of speech and the First Amendment give her the right to say the words that she said. That, that right, that freedom of speech, is what Amber Heard is asking you to uphold and protect in this lawsuit. And that's a very simple question. The question you could decide this afternoon. And it does not require you to stand and serve as the umpire of two movie stars' imperfect marriage. It doesn't. And so we're going to focus on those words. We're going to look at those words. And as we look at those words, I'd ask you to keep this in mind. Keep in mind what you just saw on the screen from Mr. Chu when he put up those words. Keep in mind what you didn't see. You didn't see the rest of the opinion piece. And what we'd ask is that as you look at those words, that you look at them in the context of the piece in which they were written. Now, whether you look at them individually or in the context of the piece doesn't really matter because the words are true. But context matters. When the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case began, her lawyer talked a bit about the First Amendment. And that may sound a little bit odd in this case in which so much has come forward relating to who did what to whom, uh, who yelled, who hit, uh, who misbehaved, uh, and the like. But it's worth pausing for a minute just to think about how the First Amendment became involved at all. And the easy answer is it became involved because what started this case as a case was an op-ed piece uh, written, in the, at least in the name, of Amber Heard uh, uh, with help, it turned out, from the ACLU. Uh, and it was that piece which is the document that Johnny Depp is suing on. I mean, his claim is not that she said this to a friend, not that she gave a speech at Madison Square Garden, but she wrote an op-ed piece in the Washington Post saying these various, very, very critical things about him. And so, yes, uh, at the end of the day, as a legal matter, uh, one of the central issues in the case is a fir First Amendment issue. And the First Amendment issue is not just is what she said true or not, and not a lot of other things that we've seen as we've watched the trial, but whether in this op-ed piece she said things with a particular state of mind that allows him to bring and possibly win uh, the case. Now, how can that be? It is because, as a result of the great, the truly great 1964 case of the U.S. Supreme Court and New York Times versus Sullivan, the court said that, that when a public figure uh, is at issue and the public figure is uh, suing, Johnny Depp is certainly a public figure, uh, that when something is said about that person and, and he or she says, well, that's not true, under American law, under American First Amendment law, there has to be proof, not just that it wasn't true, but that it was known to be untrue or suspected to be untrue by the person who said it. So he sues her. He says, what she wrote in the Washington Post about me was false. And what I'm saying is that her lawyer was certainly correct as a matter of law in saying that one of the things that, that he has to prove in order to win this case is not just that stuff in the article wasn't so, but that she said it with what the law calls actual malice. It was an unfortunate choice of words uh, by the Supreme Court to use those words because it doesn't 
mean malice the way you and I would use those words at all. What it's come to mean, and very clearly so, is that something was said about a public person like Johnny Depp with knowledge, actual knowledge, that it was false or with serious doubt that it was false or true. Knowledge of falsity or serious doubts as to its truth. And so because of that, because of the need in a libel case, and this is a libel case, for the plaintiff to win the case, the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp, has got to show not just that, that things she said he said, things she said he did weren't true, but that she knew it or suspected it. Now, in this sort of case, that might not be such a heavy barrier because we're talking about two people vis-a-vis -vis each other. And so if, if a jury is ready to, to vote for Johnny Depp, it's already ready to say, it has to be ready to say, well, what, what she said in that op-ed piece wasn't true. The add-on, the First Amendment add-on, is not just that it was not true, but that she knew or she suspected it wasn't true. And so in a case like this, my reaction is that uh, if, if it resulted finally in a verdict uh, in his favor, it will be because the jury believed him and thought she was lying, that the jury came to the conclusion that what that op-ed piece said was untrue and in the nature of things, husband and wife suing each other, known to her to be untrue. But that add-on, that added requirement of knowledge of falsity or serious doubts about truth or falsity is a consequence of the First Amendment's protection for free speech. And in a case in which the speech is a, a newspaper article, an op-ed piece in the Washington Post, that's something that the public figure who is suing Johnny Depp here has got to prove in order to win. <laughs>